Hi guys, Pete here from Outside Creations. Today we're looking at the Rode NTG4 paired with the Zoom H4n. We're gonna talk about how we set it up and why we like to use it. And we're also gonna talk about why it might not actually be the best fit for your production. So already you've got a pretty good idea how we're using the mic. So NTG4 on a boom pole, we've got a three meter XLR. Ignore this here, that's the Rode Video Mic Pro. We're using that for comparison later. Um, then we've got that attached to a lighting stand with a small rig with a little magic arm so we can angle the uh, H4n wherever we want it. It could be handy for me to say quickly that the difference between the NTG4 and the NTG4 Plus is that the Plus has an inbuilt battery and the Rode NTG4 has to be run off phantom power. So now I'm going to talk about why we've actually got this new microphone. We've been using the Rode VideoMic Pro for a while and we do really like it. It's really good for run and gun, single operator style filming. But we thought we'd get this high quality XLR shotgun mic because we're doing more dialogue and we need to sort of isolate that dialogue and get crisper, cleaner audio. So our first impressions on this new mic were quite varied. Um, we did some tests where we had the mic quite close to a person talking, like you're hearing now. We've got cars in the background, we've got rain on the roof. Um, but I should be quite isolated and the sound should be sounding pretty good. Um, but we did some tests where we brought the microphone a bit further away and the first thing we noticed was on the zoom we needed to put the input level to almost 100 and that's just having the microphone about 3 meters away from the user. Um, we thought this microphone be, would be really sensitive um, and so we wouldn't have to sort of be dialing up the uh, preamp in the H4n um, but that's something we learned we'd have to do. We're not experts in audio, but we think the low volume issue is because the H4n has quite quiet preamps and the NTG4 has a low volume or gain output. So I had a little look on the internet and I think I was a bit misinformed on what a microphone like this should perform like. Um, they were saying you should always have it about a meter away from your subject. Um, and I was imagining it having it strapped to the camera, having it over sort of four meters away from a subject and still collecting really nice clean audio. Um, we also collect ambient sounds and foley and we thought this microphone would be perfect for doing that. Like I said, we had the audio gain set up to about 100%, even like three meters away. So I don't think this would be that good for picking up sounds that are too far away from your person. But that aside and my lack of audio knowledge, um, we are really impressed by this microphone. We were doing a corporate job the other week and we were in really busy offices and we had the microphone about this close, maybe even double the distance as this, and it was really cutting out all the background noise. You couldn't hear people chatting and gossiping in the background. We also like the fact that it plugs into the H4n because you can record in WAV format. Uh, now that means you're recording a lot more audio information. So if you're sort of cleaning up the audio, uh, you're distorting the audio or sort of doing whatever effects you want to it, it should hold a lot more information and sound better after you processed it. So as you can see, I've got a few mics scattered around the shop. Obviously the big boy, the NTG4, the Rode Video Mic Pro, and then also a little lav mic. It's the one that came with the Rode Link Filmmaker package. Um, and I'm probably just gonna repeat this sentence and play it through each of the microphones so you can get an idea of the quality and the sound that each one produces. Um, and I'm probably just gonna repeat this sentence and play it through each of the microphones so you can get an idea of the quality and the sound that each one produces. Um, and I'm probably just going to repeat this sentence and play it through each of the microphones so you can get an idea of the quality and the sound that each one produces. Now from our use with each of the microphones, what we've found is the lav mic often sounds really good, but it can sound a bit peaky and also it doesn't sort of isolate as well as we found the NTG4 to do. The Rode VideoMic Pro, we actually really like how that sounds. It sounds quite similar to the NTG4 when it's closer, maybe just a bit harder to edit and maybe a bit more bouncing around on the levels. Um, but as you bring it further back, we found it starts to deteriorate and let a lot of background noise in. And the NTG4, like I said earlier, um, really does isolate you well. And we found the lows and the mids and the highs to be really pleasing. And it's just a really nice sort of audio file to edit when you're in post-production. So to give you an idea how the microphone acts at different distances away from your subject, we're just gonna move it back and you can just listen to me. So right now it's about 50 centimeters away from me. Now the microphone is about a meter away from my mouth, so you can hear what it sounds like now. Now the microphone is about two meters away from my mouth, so you can hear what that sounds like. So our overall opinion on the NTG4 and the H4n is that it's a really good combo. If you're doing stuff like this, people sat down, dialogue, where you need it to be really crisp, really nice files to work with, 
um, it's a really good setup for you. If you're doing stuff where you need to be a bit further away um, and you need sort of a jack of all trades microphone, the Video Mic Pro might actually be better for you. If you're doing shots where you're gonna be really wide, you're gonna be running around and you can't boom it in or you can't have someone moving around with the boom and the uh, NTG4, you might find a lav mic is actually better for you. Um, but for what we're doing and voiceover, we find this really adds a lot of production value to our videos. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, it's been quite exciting leaping into a new sort of area of audio, trying out new microphones. And uh, we hope this has helped you if you're thinking of doing the same thing. Uh, if you could like and subscribe to this video, that'd be absolutely amazing, really helps us out. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.